Another day, another hematology videos. In the previous videos, we have talked about bradykinin, hereditary angioedema, as well as acquired angioedema. Today, I'll talk about ACE inhibitors, the famous antihypertensive medication, and good for congestive heart failure by inhibiting the angiotensin converting enzyme. It causes dry cough, angioedema, hyperkalemia maybe kidney problems. So when you inhibit the ACE, good things happen, such as controlling your blood pressure, and bad things happen, such as cough, angioedema, and hyperkalemia. Now let's get started. Angiotensin converting enzyme. Let's talk about the enzyme before we inhibit it. Renin comes from the kidney, which converts angiotensin ogen from the liver into angiotensin 1. ACE coming from the lung, as well as the endothelium, converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, which acts on its receptor, no kidding, which will lead to vasoconstriction of arterioles, raising the blood pressure, aldosterone release, reabsorbing sodium, secreting potassium, and secreting hydrogen ions. Increase thirst and ADH, this is very important, and increase sodium potassium exchange at the proximal complex. Ah, okay. Now, the same angiotensin converting enzyme is responsible for preventing the formation of bradykinin. And even if bradykinin is there, let's degrade it into inactive metabolites. Cool. Angiotensin 2 will cause sodium reabsorption, hypokalemia, and alkalosis. What do you think ACE inhibitor will do? ACE inhibitors will treat the hypertension? Absolutely. Increase natriuresis, natriuresis, okay, and cause hyperkalemia as well as acidosis. Indications of ACE inhibitors, where, when should we use them? For hypertension, oh yeah, big time. CHF, congestive heart failure myocardial infarction, and diabetic kidney disease, also known as diabetic nephropathy. It can also be used to decrease water intake in patients suffering from psychogenic polydipsia or schizophrenia. Why is that? Because remember, angiotensin 2 used to increase thirst sensation. So, when you use an ACE inhibitor, there is no angiotensin 2, so you decrease the thirst sensation. Brilliant, isn't it? First things first, high molecular weight kinogen is converted into bradykinin thanks to calocrine. Bradykinin will do all of this crazy butt stuff, but there is an enzyme here called ACE, and it is a converting enzyme. Please don't produce bradykinin. Even if you did, I'm gonna degrade it into inactive, ugly, useless metabolites. So, ACE takes bradykinin to the cleaners. That's why we call ACE a kinin ACE. Thank you, ACE. You truly ACE. So when you use ACE inhibitors, bradykinin is left free. It's uninhibited, it's undegraded. Side effects of ACE inhibitors. First, let's talk about ACE. ACE takes bradykinin to the cleaners. Cool. When you use an ACE inhibitor, bradykinin is left free. It's not taken to the cleaner. In fact, it's dominant. It's live and kicking, baby. And will lead to dry cough, angioedema, pain, hypotension, etc. The same ACE enzyme used to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now you're using ACE inhibitors. There is no vasoconstriction. There is no hypertension. In fact, there is hypotension. That's why ACE inhibitors are anti-hypertensive medications. There is no increased GFR. That's why they could cause some kidney problems, at least in the beginning. And we have no increase in sodium reabsorption, leading to natriuresis, loss of sodium in the urine. Increased potassium reabsorption, leading to hyperkalemia. And increased hydrogen ion reabsorption, leading to metabolic acidosis. So here are the adverse effects of ACE inhibitors. Dry cough, angioedema, hypotension, renal impairment, natriuresis, acidosis, hyperkalemia, and ad nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, because come on, it's pharmacology. If you love these videos, you will love my cases, 50 hematology cases written by me. Many of them are extremely difficult, warning, okay? So it's not for 
those faint-hearted people. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, let it happen, get the cases, and take your education to the next level. Contraindications of ACE inhibitors. Okay, hereditary angioedema, big time. Watch my previous video because when you use ACE inhibitors, you have lots of bradykinin. And people with hereditary angioedema already have lots of bradykinin. Don't add fuel to the fire. Contraindication, if there is a previous ACE inhibitor associated angioedema. If you gave a patient ACE inhibitors, they develop angioedema. Please don't repeat your mistake twice. You look like an idiot and the patient could die. Pregnancy. ACE inhibitors are teratogenic. They are pregnancy category D. They can lead to congenital malformation in the CVS and CNS. Allergy. Because some of ACE inhibitors contain sulfur. So sulfur drug allergy of the patient is allergic to sulfur. Don't use some of them. Examples. Okay. ACE inhibitors are drugs that I like because all of them end in prel, which is nice. We have three groups. The sulfhydryl group, which contains sulfhydryl, really, dicarboxylate, which contains dicarboxyl, and phosphate, which contains phosphate. Okay, sulfhydryl. Use, don't use these if the patient has sulf drug allergy. Captopril, zafenopril, dicarboxylate, enalapril, ramipril, lacinopril, quinalapril, phosphate, phosinopril. Some pro tips for the pros. ACE inhibitors are excellent and i mean excellent for treatment of kidney disease in cases of scleroderma now we call it systemic sclerosis they are excellent to the point of being miraculous and i'm not kidding they are really good for nephrosis due to systemic sclerosis if you have a patient with diabetes and hypertension try ace inhibitors it your it's your first drug of choice because it treats hypertension and it's good for diabetic nephropathy. I mean, two birds with one stone. It's a dream. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Medicosis. You can support my channel as well as get my notes and my cases by going to patreon.com forward slash Medicosis. And I'll see you soon in the next video. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard.